Well, hello again, Xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another Xenography show. This week, we will be looking at starter film SLRs. Nice, cheap starter SLRs of reasonable quality that you can buy for not very much money and have a little go at film SLR photography. So, introducing the lineup. And taking centre stage here, we have the Zenit B. This camera was made for many years in Russia, and there are a number of variations of it. There is a Zenit E that has a built-in light meter, but which is essentially the same thing. This camera is all manual. It doesn't have a light meter. It doesn't have any way of checking your exposure, so you do need a separate light meter to use it. It has a lever wind, as you can see goes quite a long way around there and it's got a fairly loud shutter it comes with and this is perhaps its uh, finest party piece it usually comes with this lens which as you will see is the wondrous and remarkable Helios 44 or in this case the 442 the 44 and the 442 are very very similar lenses. I'm not sure what the exact differences are. The 44-2 I think perhaps has a little better resolving power. But this lens has become quite a cult lens. Uh, as you'll know if you follow Film Photography Matters or indeed if you've looked at my video on the matter. On account of its swirly bokeh, it's an exact copy of the 1930s Zeiss Biotar. And this lens was manufactured in various guises right up until the mid-90s. And this is a wonderful lens. This is one of my favourite, if not my favourite, lens. And there's usually one on my Sony a7 pretty much permanently. It is a very nice lens. It focuses down to 50 centimetres to infinity. It has apertures from f16 to f2. And it's a lovely piece of kit. The mount is M42 screw thread, just screws on and off, nice and simple. These are very tough cameras. Uh, if we look at the top plate, you can see that it's got shutter speeds, a fairly limited range of shutter speeds from 1 500th to 1 30th. So it's got five speeds, no slow speeds on these Zenits. Uh, and there's also a B setting. Film loading is pretty easy. All you do is lift up this little catch and the back springs open and inside you'll see the Leica derived shutter. There it is in all its shuttery wonderfulness and it's a cloth shutter. There it goes. Uh, if you're familiar with Russian cameras you'll see that the inside looks pretty similar to uh, the Zorkis and the Feds, and that's because the Zenit line, in fact, originally did derive from the Zorki 4 rangefinder, and so that's why it's uh, fairly similar in its construction. These shutter curtains don't seem to go wrong too much. It seems a very robust mechanism. I've handled many of these cameras. Some of them have been bought for literally a few pounds, you know, below ten pounds, and they are almost always in working condition so that's a testament to the ruggedness and the quality of these cameras. They are pretty simple, um, there's no metering, uh, all the metering has to be done by the photographer or use Sony 16, but they're pretty nice. Um, they can suffer from a fault which is that in the viewfinder you sometimes get a line, sort of misty line part way through the image but that really doesn't affect uh, photography too much, if at all. So now let's go back in time a little bit and look at the predecessor to the Zenit B, that is this lovely beast of a machine, the Zenit 3M. And if you're familiar with the Zorki models, the Zorki rangefinders, you may notice some similarity of design. Uh, it's clearly not the same machine, but there is a, uh, a vague sort of similarity in uh, in shape uh, and in design. It's got the, if we look underneath, you'll see it's got the rounded corners uh, that all the, uh, rounded edges rather, that all the Russian rangefinders had and it does betray its Zorki roots quite clearly there. It 
comes with the same range of shutter speeds as the, as the Zenit B. Let's look at the top deck. It's completely manual. There's no automation at all on this camera. There's no exposure meter on this camera. It's simply a manual camera with no bells and whistles. In fact, this camera is probably one of the least bells and whistly SLR cameras that you could ever find. Same range of shutter speeds as on the Zenit B, a lever wind mechanism. There goes the shutter. It has the same lens or almost the same lens as the Zenit B. This is the Helios 44 in what I think is a very, very pleasing, smart, polished aluminium finish. I really do like the look of this lens and in fact this is why I bought this camera. I just like the look of this lens. I, th I think it's absolutely beautiful. One thing to be aware of. This lens, this camera is a screw mount. However, it is not an M42 screw mount. It is an M39 screw mount. The thread pitch and diameter is exactly the same as the Leica L39 mount, but the film register distance is different. So what you can't do is mount one of these early Helios 44 lenses on a rangefinder. It just won't focus. You can mount Leica L39 and Soviet L39 and indeed any other L39 rangefinder lenses on this camera. And that will give you quite an interesting beast. It won't focus to infinity or anywhere near it, but it will allow you to get very, very close to your subject. So it's a kind of a cheapy way of achieving macro, which can be quite interesting to play with. So the Zenit 3M. It's a little curious in that as I wind the lever, you'll hear a click. Yeah, that click. That click is the mirror moving out away, out of the way of the light path. So until you've wound on this camera, you cannot see through the viewfinder. The mirror blocks the light path and it only becomes visible when you cock the shutter. There we go. It has a self timer feature that gives you about, I don't know, 15 to 20 seconds. If you want to take some vintage selfies, I'm not sure who would really do that, but it is possible if you really want to, um, as does the Zenit B also have a self timer feature. Despite its quirkiness and somewhat old school approach, I really like the Zenit 3M. It's a small SLR. If we compare it to the Cosina that we've got here, we're going to talk about in a minute, you can see it's actually roughly the same size. It's, it's a little taller but width-wise it's pretty much the same. And it's actually a really nice camera. They're well made. The, the uh, script is engraved. All the shutter markings are engraved. All of the markings are engraved. If we look around the back, we've got the serial number there and made in USSR. Let's open it up for a quick look. There's the Leica derived shutter. You can clearly see the similarity to the Zorki family. This one's a bit sticky on one thirtieth, I think. Ah, that seemed to work all right. Maybe it's freed up. So there we are, the Zenit 3M, a very nice little camera. By the way, there is no automatic aperture stop down on either of these cameras. So that means you do have to remember that when you're composing and focusing, you might want to open up the aperture to get more light into the camera so you can see what you're doing. But when you shoot, if you need to close that aperture down, you have to do it manually on both of these cameras. And now the special guest star, the intruder from the West into this Eastern Bloc lineup. This is the Cosina CT1. This was a series of cameras that was manufactured through the 70s and into the 80s. They might even have made it into the 90s. I'm not too sure. They were sold by the likes of Dixons and Currys, and they were the lower end of the SLR 
market, probably a little more expensive than the Zenits, but quite a lot less expensive than other cameras like the Olympus OM-1 or OM-2 or the Nikon F series. So this is very much a consumer camera and it's a very cheap camera also. They were very cheap when they were originally sold and they're very cheap now. This camera cost me the grand sum of five pounds from a car boot fair. It came with, there's a range of lenses for Cosina. This one came with a 28 mil f 2.8 to f 22 lens. So this is a nice lens for street photography in theory anyway. I'll post some sample images up at the end of this video so you can see what all three of these lenses are capable of. But yeah, so we've got the 28mm lens on here, f2.8 to f22. If we look at the top deck, we can see some dust. Let's get rid of that. We can see that it's a fairly standard sort of SLR layout. We've got the film rewind and the uh, film speed selector here. Uh, we've got a hot shoe on top and we've got shutter speeds from one thousandth of a second to one second and B. So this camera is much more versatile in terms of its shutter speeds. It's very small, it's very light, it's made of plastic, certainly on the outside. It has a metal chassis I believe, but it's plastic on the outside. This is the CT1 and there are various iterations of this camera with different model names and there may well be slight differences between cameras. These are not fashionable cameras by any means now and in fact they do tend to be looked down on a little as a very cheap sort of camera and perhaps not as good as some others. However, don't be too quick to dismiss Cosina. They're a very long, very well established optical and photographic company. They're still going today. They were responsible for the Voigtlander Besser R1 and L1, the rangefinders that were released in the early 2000s and made up until around about, if I'm right, around about 2010. So don't be too hasty to dismiss Cosina. They're not a poor quality manufacturer by any means. And this is, in fact, a rather nice camera. Let's have a look inside, lift up the film rewind to look inside and we will see in fact that this camera has a rather groovy and very nicely engineered metal shutter which I think is really nice and does demonstrate the quality of the camera. So we'll wind on And fire. Let's make sure it's turned on. You have to turn it on Nikon style by pulling out this lever. And there we go. That's actually a very nice piece of mechanism. Not poor quality by any means. You just pull out the lever to this position to switch on the meter. And there is a meter within the viewfinder here. It has no automatic exposure. You do have to dial in the shutter speed and the aperture values uh, until you get the needle into the right point inside the viewfinder. But that's no different to the Olympus OM-1 uh, or indeed many other celebrated film SLRs. So I actually really like this little camera. It's a particular favourite of mine. So there we are, three very nice, very cheap rangefinders. These two, the Russians, are all manual. This one, the Cosina, is also all manual, but it's rather smaller and it has uh, a meter on board within the viewfinder, so that's a very helpful thing. So if you're looking to get into film SLR photography, and I do recommend that you try it, you could do very, very much worse than invest in one of these little beauties. Price-wise, you can find a Zenit B or E for, what can I say, um, £20, sometimes even less in working condition. Sometimes people ask rather more for them, £50, £60, and a really good one may just be worth that. 
However, I wouldn't ever pay that much for one um, because there are a lot of others available more cheaply. The Zenit 3M tends to go for a little more than the B and the E. These go for anywhere from £25 upwards to about £50 or £60. The Cosina, the much maligned and neglected Cosina, well, as I say, I bought this one for £5. They go from anywhere between £5 to £30 or thereabouts. All are available as bargains if you want to look. So let's have a look at the images from these lenses. As you know, I very much like the Helios. I very much wanted to like this little Cosina lens, but I didn't in the end. When I shot it on my Sony A7, I realised it had very heavy vignetting and a curious blue kind of washed out cast to the images. Other Cosina lenses may very well be better. I don't know. I haven't tried them. But here are some samples from all three of these lenses. So that's it from me for today. I will see you next time for more Xenography. Thank you for watching.